Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today we're talking about frog selection. When to use, what type of frog, what type of color, and in what situation. That way you can dominate your next frog outing. So guys, before we get started, with the video, go check out columbusbarrelco.com. They make really, really awesome products like beer flights and bottle openers and flasks, all out of old bourbon barrels. Really, really unique items at a really, really affordable price. So click the link in the description below, use the coupon code BASS25, and you're gonna save 25% on those products. Also guys, please go down, hit the subscribe button, Hit the notification bell that way you can get these videos as soon as i publish them right now i'm posting about three videos or so a week and i want you guys to be able to see all of them so subscribe to the channel hit that bell get these videos i appreciate it so today we're going to talk again about frog selection when to use what style of frog what color frog things like that guys if you want to see a video of me catching fish on a frog a little bit more detailed about everything i do with the frog you can click on the video link above i'll also leave that link in the description below that way you guys can also watch that video i catch a couple of real big fish in that video a lot of fun so check that out as well so again let's talk about frog selection and the first thing that i really want to talk about is the two different types of frogs that you have okay so you have one that is a pointed nose frog right as you can see the nose is pointed right and then the other style of frog is a popping frog right this is a very uh popular frog um they, these both of these baits are actually spro baits but almost all your main brands of frogs all have now a pointed nose style frog and a popping frog right and so when do you use a popping frog and when do you use a pointed nose frog okay so for me honestly i throw a popping frog a lot a lot a lot now when i throw it i'm usually fishing it in open water situations and what i mean by open water is i'm not fishing heavy matted vegetation or heavy grass situations right and the reason I like the popping frog in those open water situations is, is I think that a popping frog uh, actually walks a little bit better than your standard pointed nose frog. And I like to have that walk action. I like to have, I like to keep that frog almost in place, walking back and forth in those open water situations. And again, when I say open water, I mean, if I'm fishing this around a rock bank or lay downs, a lot of times I'm skipping this to shade pockets. And that's one of the biggest keys to catching fish on frogs is utilizing shade pockets, overhanging trees, under docks, things like that to catch fish on a frog. So I really like to throw a popping frog anytime I'm fishing those open water situations. Again, around lay downs, under overhanging trees, anything like that. Now, the thing about a popping frog is it's not really mimicking a frog. It's more or less mimicking a bluegill, okay? And that's one of the biggest things that this frog looks like to a bass. When you're skipping it under, you know, an overhanging tree, it's looking like a little bluegill just scurrying across the top of the surface, and that's when the fish get it, okay? Now, a pointed nose frog. When do I like to use this? This pointed nose frog i really like to use pretty much in any kind of heavy grass situation so if i'm fishing a mat you know if you go to places like lake gunnersville right you're gonna fish a lot of milfoil mats that they got that what you would call cheese style mats that you just drag this frog across the reason i like this frog is because because of the pointed nose it comes over that mat and it comes through vegetation a lot better than a cupped lip like the point like the uh, like the popping frog it just does right because sometimes that popping frog if, if you're dragging it over mats it's going to collect debris inside this little area and i don't think that that's a great thing i don't think that that's what you want now are there situations where i will still use a popping frog in a matted vegetation scenario scenario whatever you want to say yes and the biggest thing that i have found is that if I am missing a lot of frog on a pointed nose style frog like this, that's when I switch to the popping frog. And the reason being is that if you look at these two frogs, 
the pointed nose frog of the Spro has just a little bit bigger profile than the poppin' frog. This poppin' frog is a little more slender. It's not, it's, they're about the same length, but it just a, it's a smaller profile. And because of that, I think you get a little bit better hookup ratio with the poppin' frog. So even if I'm fishing matted vegetation and I'm missing fish on this frog, I will actually switch to a poppin' frog just to see. Now, does it always help? No, it doesn't always help. It doesn't always help the situation. But still, I will try the poppin' frog in a mat if they're missing this, just to see will my hookup ratio increase. Now, can you use a pointed nose style frog underneath of a dock in a overhanging tree situation? Absolutely, and it works fantastic in those situations, okay? Again, this is just me, and I prefer the poppin' frog just because I think it walks a little bit better. I think it has a little bit better hookup ratio. I just like it more. Like, there's, there's not much I can say besides that. I feel like I miss a few more on the bronze eye style frog, the pointed nose frog okay so those are kind of the situations that i use a frog in heavy mats heavy vegetation a lot of times i'm using the pointed nose an open water situation i'm using the popping frog and again with working this bait i'm actually not popping it i'm actually more or less just walking it back and forth if you guys want to see how i work frogs again click on the video i'll put it up here again you guys can click on that you can see my whole frog breakdown so colors Colors, 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 okay? Color in a frog is kind of actually funny to me. Um, and the reason being is that you guys, you have to remember that the only part of a frog that a bass is gonna see is the bottom, right? They can't, they, the, it's, it's plain and simple. Bass are under the water, a frog is on top of the water. So if I'm a bass and these are the frogs on top of the water, I can only see the bottom. Right, I can't jump, I mean, sure, I could probably jump up it in the air and see the top if I really wanted to, but I have not seen many bass doing that. So just pay attention to the bottom of a frog, okay? And when it comes to colors, you really just have to keep things simple. I keep things extremely, extremely simple. In my, this is my frog box, uh, really, really simple in here. I really have three main types of frogs, okay? And, or sorry, I have really three main types of colors in frogs. And one is going to be a black. So you have your black baits. This is a popping frog. It's it's pretty much black. I use this one a lot. I use, I use a black frog in muddy water situations. And I also use a black one when you have overcast skies, right? So if you have dark conditions, you have a thunderstorm approaching, you have overcast skies, I love the black frog then. Again, I also like it in that stained muddy water. I also almost exclusively lose, use the black. So stained muddy water, overhead conditions, black frog. Plain and simple, that'll get the job done. Now, can you use a like brown style frog like this? It probably doesn't matter. Again, it's just a darker bait. I like to use the black, look at this. This is a king daddy frog, that's a big old frog. Again though, black frog in dark situations, okay? Now, the other frog that you have is a white frog. You have black and you have white. So when do I use a white frog? I really use a white frog anytime I think that bass are really feeding heavily on bait fish like shad, right? If you have, if you, for instance, like the Tennessee River Lakes, so like Gunnersville, um, Chickamauga, Kentucky Lake, those fish heat, feed a lot on threadfin and gizzard shads. And for that reason, I think that a lot of fish just look for that white bait. A white bait like this, I mean, this is just straight white, but again, it doesn't, all that really matters is the bottom. Here's another white bait, but the look at the, look at the difference in the top. Again, the bottom's all that really matters, and these are both pretty much white. So, a white frog, anytime those fish are feeding heavily on shad is what I really like to do. So you have your blacks, you have your whites, and then the one other color that I keep is a natural color like this. This is a popping frog that is actually called natural frog uh, or natural something. And what this best mimics is a bluegill, okay? so. 
these are these are it guys these these are the only frogs that I really throw you know sometimes I will actually paint a little orange dot right there just to look more like a bluegill and so I fish this a lot when I'm fishing in in, in areas where I have cleaner water but I have fish that are feeding heavily on bluegills so if I have clean water bluegill eating fish I like the natural colored frog that sees those whites, the yellows, a little bit of orange. It looks like the bottom side of a bluegill, right? If I have shad eating fish, I use the white. In almost every other condition, muddy water, dark days, I use the black. That's it guys, I really, really keep it simple, right? I just, I, tr I try to keep it simple all the time. Now, if I'm on a really, really good frog bite, like it just seems like fish are eating frogs, that's when I'll experiment outside of these frogs. And for the most part, again, I'm still just looking at the bottom, but I might experiment with color of a bottom. Like I said, I might add some orange here or even some pink, um, different colors um, to the bottom just to see hey, is this one getting a little bit better hookup ratio? Am I getting more bites on it? But those are, that's really it. I have a black, a natural, and a white, okay? And that's that's what I go with, and, and that's what my box is. I got blacks, whites, naturals, blacks, whites, naturals. So keep that in mind when you're out there frog fishing. If, again, if you fish, if you're fishing a dark day, or you're fishing muddy water conditions, pick up the black frog or a dark frog like a dark brown okay that's it if you're fishing around fish that are eating a lot of bluegill that's when I like the natural color right and I, I will I will use this um, especially in clearer water situations where it just looks more natural it looks like a bluegill and then anytime I'm fishing around fish that are eating shad whether that's during a shad spawn or it's on lakes where they feed on shad just in general like again the Tennessee River lakes the TVA lakes, they just eat a lot of shad on those lakes. So that's all, a white is always a good frog to use in those situations. So that's pretty much it. I like to keep it simple again. I like to use popping frogs in, in open water situations. I like to use the pointed nose frogs around vegetation. I use, I use black, I use natural, and I use white, and that's it. So keep your frog fishing selection very simple. You don't need to go out and buy you 10 different colors of frogs. Keep it simple. If you get on a good frog bite, that's when you can experiment a little bit. But besides that, follow these kind of guidelines and you'll be just fine. You're gonna catch bass. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about frog fishing, leave a comment below. Also again, watch that frog fishing video of mine. I would really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.